Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at the post-process workflow for the Sigma FP camera shooting in RAW. So I brought up my um, SSD, my Samsung T5 Inside Resolve in the uh, media page. I'm going to cinema and these are the clips that I shot as MOV. These will be, these folders will be the clips I shot as RAW. So I'm going to pick one, I'm going to drag it into Resolve, um, my um, footage capture, and you can see now it's a real clip. So it went from being a folder to being a real clip. Basically append all those um, DNG files. So I'm going to find a frame that's representative. And you know, this isn't a particularly nice image. What I need to go is go into my raw tab here, hit clip, and then put this to daylight or make actually make it custom. Instead of Rec. 709, which is the vault, let's turn this to Blackmagic Design and hit the highlight recovery. You see over here um, where we've got these lights are clipped. If I hit highlight recovery, it now interprets them as more information. So we have a nice flat image here. Um, the first thing uh, you can do is do a color space transform um, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio which I do, but um, for everyone else out there, I think I might just do it with the curves um, and turn our, our raw DNG into a Rec. 709. So I'm gonna pull, I'm in the waveform here in my scopes. I'm gonna pull the top of the S up until it touches white. I'm gonna pull the bottom of the S down until it's darker. So now I'm filling up my waveform here. This represents my skin tones, it's about 70%. <clears throat> now, this still looks pretty flat, so I'm gonna push up my contrast in, in my raw tab, in my Cinema DNG raw tab, till I'm getting something a little more natural until these levels here start to touch black. Now you notice I've done all of this, I'm doing all of this from the card itself. I haven't brought the DNG files onto my hard drive. And this is something I like to do with the C200 footage because it's so big, DNG as well, is you can just grade off the card, output a ProRes 422, 1080 or um, UHD, and then you don't need to keep all the raw files if you're not gonna go back and regrade them. So now our contrast is looking better. What I'm gonna go through is uh, we can push our exposure up maybe a little higher. Now I've gotta find the color temperature so to do that, go over to my vector scope. You can see this area here is my skin tone um, and it's just very, very red. So sliding at the other direction, what I wanna do is get the, um, the blue of my eyes or anything else standing out as much as um, the red of my skin. It's also, uh, you can see now as I've, I've moved it down to 4600, what's happened is so as I've, as I've made it cooler, it's drifted my skin tones over into purple. So as I, I'll pull my tint back so that this skin tone line sits, the, the skin tones sit on the skin tone line. That's a lot better. Now, maybe warm it up a fraction. So we've lost a little bit of contrast again. So I'm gonna pull this back in. And then I'm also gonna boost our saturation. So now you can finally start. You can boost this up all the way to see what's going on, but I prefer to keep it you know, natural all the way through so you don't make weird mistakes. Coming down even further. See, now I'm getting, and I'm just sort of pushing and pulling these different values to get something that looks good, that's not peaking, and that where the skin tone stays on the skin tone line. I can use color boost to boost the things that aren't um, it, color boost rather than saturation boosts all the saturation equally. Color boost boosts just the midtone saturation. So now we're going to add some midtone detail. That'll give us some some more um, action in there. And it really is. If you have your monitor graded correctly, you really can slide this back and forth and just do it to taste. So now I have this moving from a um, Rec. Seven or Nine to a log and then back to something that's more Rec. 709, Rec. 2020. Now, um, what I can do is play, fix this skin tone up a little bit because it's still looking very, still looking pretty purpley. What I'll do is uh, hit Option S to add another node. I'll go to my curves here. I'll select, you know, like the, um, the redness of my skin 
and then what I'll do is I'll pull this down just a fraction so that the skin is looking a little more skin tony. So now that skin is looking a little better, if maybe a little green. I mean, the color temp certainly wasn't 3300, something like that. And now we may have boosted our color up too high. That's a little more natural. Now what we're going to do is add another node. Um, and in this one, we're going to turn our, we're going to go over to our um, log and shift our shadows towards blues. So that's looking pretty cool. It's actually bleeding into the highlights as well. So we'll go over to our qualifier and I'll just pull the luminance down. That will mean that this will only apply to the to the brighter, to the darker areas of the image. So another thing I like to do um, before we do this in the node is add another node. I'll add another qualifier. This is going to be a circle around the brightest part of the face. And go over to here and I'm just going to grab my shadows and lift up my shadows slightly. Add some mid-tone detail. That's looking really good. It just helps the face pop a little um, without getting too crazy and going in and adjusting the micro adjusting the eyes. In here, because this is raw, there's no compression artifacts to sharpen. So if I pull this down here in the sharpening tab to say, well, 46 might be too sharp, but 47, 47 starting to look really nice. And then if I really wanted to get fancy or I really want to get more involved, I could add another qualifier, bring in some, I mean, this is what you would do on a feature film, bring in a gradient like this and then just turn this down. I can look at my braid in my waveform here. So like what I'm doing is just bringing down the highlights and the midtones in that um, thing that's not the face. Go over, add another gradient, put that on the other side of me, put that on that side, make this a little longer. Go back to here and you see. So that's what we're working with. I mean, I think that's a pretty cinematic looking image, um, something that lit with, lit with two lights. And it's a very, uh, it's a pretty far throw from um, the Rec. 709 that we started with. You can also apply LUTs, um, which I have a bunch uh, of C200 ones. I also have a couple of LUTs that I've designed for the Sigma FP footage. Um, this is the first one. This is the second one, which is uh, much more um, split. This one's a little bit more natural. That's what we did today with uh, just the Rec. 709. So as you can see, this is a full frame um, 4K camera for under $2,000 that's capable of making really uh, high quality images that you can do a lot with in post. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.